The high cost of inputs and taxation continue to be areas of concern for local manufacturers as they make their goods less competitive in other markets. Speaking to us more on this is Mayur Shah, Senior Executive Director at Canafric Industries, but he begins by telling us how the 29-year-old family-owned business has expanded to over 20 countries with products in footwear, food, confectionery and stationery. Talking about Kenafric, uh, 29 years old in the country, of course, there's a lot of history that we can refer back to. But uh, being a founding member, at what stage would you say the company is right now? Okay, good question. Yes, being a founding member, I think the, the company, when we started in 1987, uh, we are very young, uh, we are dynamic, we are the real entrepreneurs. We started with 20 employees, and uh, <clears throat> when we took over the it used to be called Canafric Shoe Industries. Then we, uh, after a few, uh, after one year, we made it to Canafric Industries. Uh, we bought it from somebody else. Uh, it was engaging in uh, PVC uh, shoes. We used to call it "quote unquote" Sendek. And uh, from there, I think it was a, after one year learning experience, because in entrepreneurship and in business, it's never a sure shot that you're going to win the next day or the same day. So we had to have patience had to learn the external environment and the internal environment. And from there on, we expanded and uh, we were the number 14th company in our startup of the business, the youngest, the baby, in the PVC manufacturing, plastic shoes. Within two years combined, we became the number one. And the factors that was, I think, that went through was study of the market, the new innovations, the technology, and I think teamwork that really gave us that, uh, foc the relentless focus and the fire in the belly within our team that uh, made us uh, to that level. From that, we uh, went to venture into confectioning division in 1993, uh, again with few employees, uh, technology from Taiwan, because the European technology was very capital intense, so we had to start somewhere, and it was a great learning experience. After learning from that, we went to the best of the best technology, uh, with the European technology, and going to many different product lines, from bubble gums, chewing gums, lollipops, soft candies, hard candies, uh, icing sugar, and all that. Then from there, we went on to the consumer line, we, uh, for food additives. We bought an uh, international company, uh, to get onto the food additives, which is uh, doing quite fairly well. And the last uh, 2011, our investment was on uh, exercise books, 2013, sorry, Ex uh, stationary for uh, exercise books. So it's quite product, uh, uh, broad product line, I would say. You're operating in quite a wide range of uh, segments looking at food, confectionery, footwear, and stationery. How have you been able to remain relevant across uh, these markets? Oh, the change environment is ever changing. That is one thing. Uh, we have to look at the millennials, the generation X, generation Y, and now the new thing is generation Z. The, uh, the children born after 2005 and beyond, uh, very different thinking. Uh, you'll go to any child, you'll ask them to write on a book, they will say, no, please, we need digital only. You know? So we have to have the dynamics of change and we have to cope with change. And we do a lot of research and development uh, internal and also hire consultants to look at the, the best practices way forward and that has been very positive. Now you, you are in, uh, your distribution is quite wide. In Kenya alone we have like 140,000 uh, retailers. You are in 80,000 of those. How have you been able to keep uh, such a strong distribution network? Because we know in FMCG distribution is very key. Yeah. Route to the market I think is the most important part of the distribution. And that is our, uh, our secret weapon. Many of the uh, multinational international companies are looking at our model, uh, how we have really embarked onto this. And I think this had been uh, generated by our young generation who have come into the business uh, after having completed their education, my nephews and niece, and uh, they have done a wonder, wonderful job uh, creating this uh, new era of route to market. Uh, we've already reached 80,000. Uh, 20,000 more coming by next year, June 2017, and we should be able to complete all by 2018. 
Of course, we are looking at a very broad uh, range of products and across a number of sub-industries sub within manufacturing. Uh, but uh, what's your market share? How would you comment on you know, some of the major products that we see out there? What kind of market share do they occupy in the market? Yeah, uh, confectionery, yes, we would be one of the leading in Kenya. The market share, share is a very favorable uh, position, definitely. And uh, footwear also, uh, competing with butter, who are the main... Uh, uh, you know, in Africa, uh, we have also very favorable in that. Uh, and uh, f for, uh, other one is food division. Yes, that's we have a minority of the share market because we are competing with the Unilever, uh, the Royco brand, of course, as uh, one uh, known since 1970s, since even we were not born or some of us were not here. So that's very famous. And uh, stationery also, we are now coming into very well. Uh, probably into number two, uh, number two position. You're operating in about 20 countries right now, 12 very active, eight just export market. Have you been able to grow this business from just being a Kenyan shoe manufacturer to what we're seeing today? Yeah, uh, since 1996, one of the key principles and focal point of Kenyan African industries was to enter into export markets. And that was our cornerstone, the strength during those years. It was very difficult because uh, going uh, into the new markets uh, with new culture, new languages, new setup, everything, uh, we had to go from ground zero. And we are very happy that we have embarked. Uh, Twelve countries are very regular, and the other eight countries out of 20 are on a seasonal basis that goes into the East African community, Comesa, and including West Africa. We shall expand more of our product, uh, pr product variety range into this pen through deeper penetration, uh, through our marketing strategies. And we are looking right now at uh, one or two countries that we would like to embark on our manufacturing plants. Uh, we also studied in East Africa, Uganda, and Tanzania. And also on a very favorable looks to be Ethiopia, which has a population of over 100 million po uh, people. So that's one looks to be very promising. As an African manufacturer, do you find intra-regional costs very inhibitive? Because the World Bank says that Africa's intra-regional costs are among the highest in any developing region in the world. Yeah, it's always a mind-blowing because cost factors are one of the most uh, in, in di co uh, direct, indirect and direct costs that are really not controllable. In terms of the power costs, you know, that have can come down a little bit, but still in terms of percentage, we have not seen much effect. The labor costs are rising, uh, direct, indirect taxes. Uh, we, even if you are within the East African community, some countries have embarked on uh, imposing excise duty. And that is, again, adding our cost higher. Instead of being competitive and competitive advantage, I think the costs are increasing, so we become non-competitive. In East Africa right now, we are talking about rules of origin. How much of a concern is taxation, and in other cases, double taxation, to you as a business? Yeah, it is very high concern, the rules of origin. It plays an important role, but we have compl compliance and we are quite okay with that. Uh, in terms of double taxation, as I said uh, the earlier, the excise duty, I think that uh, embarked in some of the countries, I think is creating a lot of stiff and bringing the cost to a higher level and become sometimes unaffordable. And uh, it, 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 I, we always feel it should be an open arena like the EEC uh, and the ECWAS in West Africa that you know, there should be no bottlenecks. So let's try to see competitive and competitive advantage in the law of economics, supply and demand, elasticity of supply and demand. I think that's the key uh, rule. Right now there's the conversation about uh, you know, the tripartite agreement bringing you know, uh, Gomesa, Sadek, East Africa together. Um, is this a conversation you are very keen on? How would it open up business for you? Because ease of access to markets is what you're looking for. I think that will be very favorable. We would say, please do it as soon as possible. We are also uh, definitely yes on it. Because again, it's a survival of the pittest. Uh, and uh, we can import some of the stuff that we are not making from South Africa or other regions, other parts of the world uh, uh, within Africa. And we can export our goods more freer without uh, and the movement of goods become much cheaper. And as uh, one point you embarked on cost of uh, goods selling. I'll give you an example. Selling to Kinshasa, the port of Matadi, is uh, 100, uh, 150 nautical miles uh, away from Kinshasa. To ship from Nairobi, we have to go by road to Mombasa. 
Mombasa to sea by to Cape Town. Cape Town is congestion. It has to wait for one month or till the docking is done. Goes to Kinshasa. It reaches after three to four months to the customer. I think it's, it is really a non-playing field. As per your experience, what would you call the most difficult African markets to operate in looking at what you'd call areas of concern? Africa is ever-changing. You know, one positive thing is a hotbed of investments. You've seen Kenya has got a lot of multinational companies coming in. We have recently opened the Pizza, Kentucky Fried, uh, General Electric has come in, Samsung, many of them. I think you can see the more positiveness. Um, on, uh, the, pro the problem areas, yes, definitely will be sorted out. Uh, we have the legislation going on and uh, the VAT returns. Uh, I think the, the government is working, which we used to have a lot of problems, manufacturing special exporters was a major concern, but uh, working cordially with uh, government agencies, uh, especially the Kenya Revenue Authority, I think will work out much better and we can see uh, uh, much more positive in the few years to come. Talk to us about the growth strategy for Ken Africa in the medium term. Uh, yeah, we are going to go um, more on our uh, existing products, concentric diversification, uh, maybe going into the soft drinks, uh, we are looking at that, juices, ready to drink juices. Uh, we are also going on to the snacks, uh, similar to what we call the PepsiCo of Africa, you know, together combined. Uh, we are also planning to expand our footwear because the fastest growing region in the world is the middle, income, middle class. So we are going on to more of the little expensive type of the, from the lower end to the middle class uh, um, uh, um, uh, footwear. Uh, stationary, we are looking also of the more higher quality going into that. So we are definitely changing with times and being par with the world, with the rest of the world in moving the, the dynamics of the market. Mm -hmm. And finally, on you, uh, you are the runner up for the Ernst & Young World Entrepreneur of the Year 2016 at, at Monaco. Congratulations for that. Uh, how was it like for you participating in this kind of, I would assume, very intense competition? Yeah, Monaco, I think the EY Entrepreneur of the Year was, I think everybody was a winner, nobody was a loser. It was a one of the most, uh, one of the best experience we had. It was very well organized. We got a lot of networking. I think uh, many of our counterparts now know where Africa is in, in terms of businesses. And that's why we've seen a lot of headquarters coming into Africa. It has a lot of broad positiveness. I think it has really given us a great motivation uh, to our East African region and Africa overall. Uh, I think a uh, lot of potential all, all across. and. Uh, it, it, it was one of the best experiences we ever had.